Our second reading is taken from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, beginning to read at verse 10. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others. But we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. And this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we respond to God's word using these words. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth, truth have kissed each other, have met each other. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other, that glory may dwell in our land. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. B Day a day 75 years ago of rejoicing and celebration for many. For whilst the threat of invasion had ended some years before, the war with its ongoing fatalities and injuries had continued. And in fact, VE Day, as we know, was only one part of the end. There was still the war in the Far East that was ongoing. But that ending is shown in pictures like this one by Lari, and a picture that shows us rejoicing, but also people going about their daily activity, and some who I suspect are ignoring the rejoicing around them because of the pain that is within them. Because of course, many grieved for young men and women and those who were not so young, whether killed on the front line, following injuries, or because of the bombardment of this nation. And there were those who never found their loved one's bodies because of the way that they were killed or the place where they died. Local examples of that would be Christopher Hebler from Barton St. David, who was killed over the sea as a pilot officer in the RAF. His mother, always hoped he would come home. So his name isn't on the war memorial in Barton St. David, but it is here in church on the credence table. Or 
as part of the Dickinson family, Caleb Dickinson, who was lost over the North Sea. Again, no memorial in terms of a grave, just this memorial in King Western Church. Of course, others were waiting for the end of the war in the Far East, where their loved ones were fighting or in those infamous prisoner of war camps. I have no doubt too that VE Day caused hard work for those who worked as publicans or in cinemas or places where people were congregating. Never mind the work that was done by the women, and it would have been predominantly women, to make the food for the street parties. But that first reading resonates with some of those aspects of the, the, the sense of VE Day. We have those who are rejoicing. The first reading spoke about the elderly in the street and the children playing. Here we have people rejoicing as VE Day occurs, dancing in the streets, the crowds gathering to see and to hear Winston Churchill and also the royal family. And finally, fairly formal pose of children ready for their street party. Some of them look as if they don't really want to have to wait for the food to come. The reading we heard from Zechariah was a reading that looked forward to the restoration of Israel. Nothing to do with VE Day in our own time. And like many prophecies at the book of, at the end of Old Testament books, it looks forward to a time of hope, of restoration, of joy and of peace. A time that will include the elderly in the street, boys and girls playing, and a renewed realisation that nothing is impossible for God. That God can and indeed will fulfil his promises to his people. And that fulfilment will result in a return to geography, but also a return to God in faithfulness and righteousness. And we heard in our second reading that that righteousness comes because of what Jesus has done. Because the reason the people in Zechariah's time were in trouble was because they had turned their backs on God gone their own way, done their own thing. And in order to be restored, they needed to turn around, to reorientate themselves back towards God, to repent, to learn and to listen. And Zechariah says that learning will happen in exile. Of course, the nation that rejoiced on VE Day had a long way to go to recover from war. I don't know about you, I watched on Friday night the programme on BBC One at eight o'clock that had music and recollections. And two of those recollections, above all others, really struck me. The first was from someone who remembered VE Day as a child, but remembered the sorrow and the joy because her father had been killed in the war. And even now, as she talked about it, 75 years on, her voice broke as she spoke of the pain that VE Day reminded her of, reminding her that her father would never come home. And the second was the elderly lady who had served in the Wrens, who had never received her medal, and who was given it with all the pomp and ceremony that is possible at this time. And I had a tear in my eye as this woman's service was recognised. Both of those and many others have taken years to recover and to be honoured. And even for the others, the war had to end. There was still that five month wait, four month wait. And then the nation needed to be rebuilt. Many of you will know I used to live in Liverpool and there is still in the middle of Liverpool a bombed out church. It's never been rebuilt, a permanent reminder. The fabric of the land needed to recover. People 
needed time to recover. The rejoicing came, but it was also spasmodic and always incomplete, because that is what almost any situation is. There is always a sense of incompleteness, because we are this side of eternity. We want to return in faithfulness and righteousness, and we are called to do so. But sometimes we recognize our own humanity and our own failings. Today, I would suggest 75 years on is very different to VE Day. And I'm not entirely sure that I agree with those who are likening COVID-19 and lockdown to the situation that our nation faced during World War II. Apart from anything else, I hope it will last much shorter time than six years. But we are beginning to wonder what our nation will look like. Some of us are wondering when we will be able to go back into churches, either just to have them open for people to go in and pray, or to worship, or to worship closer than two metres apart and receive bread and wine. Grandparents and grandchildren wonder when they will be able to see each other again, when they will be able to give each other a hug. When will rejoicing come? albeit rejoicing tinged with sadness at all the lives that have been lost. But I wonder too whether we are ready for a change of behaviour, both individually and corporately, nationally and internationally. I suspect that like the recovery from war, like the return from exile that Zechariah foresees, this is going to be a slow process. The rebuilding of trust will take time. And again, there is that challenge about faithfulness and righteousness. But maybe like those rejoicing on VE Day, like Zechariah, we can look forward to that time. The questions are, have we learnt from this time? Are we ready to return to God in faithfulness and righteousness? Are we prepared for things to be different and to walk into the future knowing that God is there? We go with him and he will lead us into that future, just as he led those who came through the war, just as he has led the church ever since then. I wonder, are we ready to follow him in faithfulness and righteousness? Amen. One of the hymns that was sung on the first VE Day was Now Thank We All Our God, which is, of course, German. And we sing that now, a reminder of the call to reconciliation, the call to faithfulness, the call to righteousness, and the call to thankfulness for all that God is and has done for us. And so we have Now Thank We All Our God. And then Jane Sedgman will lead us in our prayers. <laughs> 